to the show. Hi. So you've gone from someone who took seven years to make her first film because actors just didn't believe that that specific story would work. And you've gone from that to being the person that every actor wants to work with because you make very specific mm. individual stories. Um, do you, does it feel a bit ironic, surreal sometimes? You know, you can't look at it like that. No, I get it. It was a time um, when uh, there were no multiplexes. It was a time when these kind of stories weren't told. Uh, these kind of lead actors didn't, ex the lead characters, heroes mm. didn't exist. And honestly, it didn't make money. So they were, they also felt that this won't fly right now. So they also had a point. So you can't be like, now you want to work with me. I mean, it's, it, it, it's an evolution, yeah. you know, and uh, this is the business. Yeah, this is where we're in. And this is, it's creative. Sometimes you are, you know, you're in form. Mm. Sometimes you're not in form. You know, it's, it, our jobs are, uh, they've got a lot to do with our psychology. True. They've got a lot to do with what's going on in your life right now and where you're at and where your attention is. It's not so simple. Sure. You know. But what powered you during that phase when, when you just couldn't cast the film? When, when you had actors and then you didn't have them, um, you carried on relentlessly. Yeah. You, you, dis, you, you didn't, you know, compromise on what you wanted to make. Yeah. That was the story you wanted to tell. What kind of fueled that? You know, I think A, a lack of options because I never wanted to do anything else and I'm obsessed with movies and be a uh, serious cockiness yeah. serious cockiness you know like I just was like you don't know what you're talking about right. I'm gonna be a huge filmmaker you know what I mean like bottom line serious cockiness mm. like and I remember so clearly I actually put it I put the scene into the film I was really upset because an actor refused my movie mm -hmm. and I was with Reema and I'm like you know and Farhan and I was actually crying and I was like I, I, I don't know what I'm doing here and like is this gonna happen and I don't know if I fit in and you know and uh, and Reema was like are you here to work with this person right. and I was like no she's like why are you here and she's like you're here to make movies so this person is of no relevance So because one of the themes of this of this show is bold moves, mm. what do you consider the one bold move or the one key decision that you took um, in your career that has led directly to being where you are today? Okay. Okay. So when I was struggling to make luck by chance, I'm not going to give you names because that's not cool. A uh, very big lead actor offered me a movie that he wanted to make. Um, and asked me to direct it and I really thought about it and uh, it, it was it was a it was a blockbuster like it was on paper on paper you know what I mean it was just the idea of it yeah and uh, but it just wasn't the story I wanted to tell and I really thought about it it was a massive decision and I was like my first film can't be about you it has to be about me right so and I had nothing at that point, you know, and um, so I didn't do it. But I think it held me in good stead. Right. I also had the privilege to say no right. to that. Yeah. I mean, I won't call it such a bold move. I mean, it is bold on one level, but I had the privilege because I was working. Right. You know, I was working as a casting director. I was working as an assistant director. So I was... Uh, I was making money. Right. Like I was working. I had a job. Right. You know, and uh, I don't pay rent. Yeah, yeah. I have a house from you know uh, with my parents. So I was. Yes, it was like I, I, I was saying. No it's so to, pretty. Yeah, yeah. yeah. A, a, a but I wasn't on the street. Right. So maybe if I didn't have anything, I don't know if I would. Right. Do you know what I mean? Again, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. You've said that one of the smartest things you did um, while training to become a director mm -hmm. was not stick to any one director. You trained under multiple directors. Yeah. You worked with uh, as an assistant to yeah. many directors, yeah. um, presumably to understand different and absorb different styles and different uh, approaches to work. Yeah. How has that sort of defined or shaped your own filmmaking? I think when you work, like either you go to film school, when you go to film school, you come out, it's a very different... You, you know, you cultivate yeah. your voice, but that comes with its own 
uh, ethos being mm. in a film school, you mm. know. And I did do a diploma a course, a, a degree, I did a diploma and it was fun. But working with directors is working on the ground was really amazing. Who were some of the filmmakers that you assisted? Meera, mm. uh, Dave Benegal, uh, Mahesh Mathai, mm. uh, Tony Gerber, this American director, uh, Farhan on Dil Chata yeah. um, and uh, Kaizad Gustad uh, on Bombay Boys. Uh, and a lot of commercial directors, Prasoon Pandey, who's amazing. Right. He's amazing with actors. Mm. You know, uh, Abhinay Deo. Uh, I mean, just tons and Very tons. Very interesting choices, yeah. yeah. Tons and tons of uh, commercial directors and yeah. tons of foreign uh, ad filmmakers. Yeah. Because we were freelance ADs. Uh, so we just, I, I just did all the foreign jobs that came to India. Right. I did most of those. So lots of people. What is the influence that your parents' work had on you growing up? You know, um, I think the, the first the concept only of like writing, yeah, that the idea that you can sit down and write, right. I think when you are around that from the time you're that high, mm. uh, I, I think that somehow influences you, you know, that write anything, write a composition, right. write a poem, write a song, write a story, you start thinking about writing and start writing at a very young age because you see it as a practice around you, you know, okay, so you're you're seeing story sessions, you're right. seeing narrations, you're, it just comes in with osmosis. Also, there's no better film school than watching films. True. There is no better film school. You like, said your mom exposed you to everything. Everything. Like Farhan, I think Farhan's film school is just watching films. Mm. Um, what what does what does success mean to you? Is um, luck by chance the film that didn't necessarily do very well at the box office yeah. and yet it's a film that, that, that people hold yeah. so dearly uh, yeah. to their hearts. Is it... Um, is it a failure compared to Zindagi Na Milegi Dubara, which was a box office success in your head? No, I don't think so. I mean, Zindagi got made the way it got made because of luck by chance. Sure. You know, and it's weird because it made, it, it may not have, but like someone like Katrina, who yeah. didn't know me, and Katrina is a, was a bona fide box office Star. superstar, you know? Right, right. And she was like, right there, and she's very commercially oriented and wired and uh, she called me and said I want to work with you right. and I was like really and she said I really liked your film and I think you you know I think you're a great director and I'd like to work with you so it was like Rithik was it was just simple I'd yeah. already worked with Rithik he didn't care if the film made money or no he liked it and he was like yeah I'm on right. so it suddenly made my casting life very easy so yeah, now that you've directed uh, an original series uh, for an OTT platform what did that give you or, or why was it important to work in that medium what did what are the luxuries that that afforded you that perhaps um, cinema right. didn't, doesn't couple of things I mean uh, it's a medium I consume mm. I watch shows so, uh, and I like them because of the long format. I'm a writer and I tend to anyway overwrite. So it's just perfect right. for me, you know. So it gives you those many hours to develop characters, those many hours to unfold stories, those many hours for character arcs. And you can get into details and you know. So it there it's a different beast. I worked with Reema and I worked with Alankrita Shivastav yeah. on this. And we, we had fun doing it. And finally, of course, the production company, Tiger Baby, that you've launched yes. with Reema ha is off to a flying start. Yes. What, um, um, what do you want for this company to represent and what what can we expect from from the banner? You know, like we definitely want to tell contemporary stories. We want to tell Indian stories yeah. and we want to tell them in a syntax that hopefully the globe can watch. Right. You know, and at the same, but we want to, this is our home ground. Yeah. You know, this is our home ground. We want to make commercial Hindi films for a global audience. Nice. Eventually, that is what we want to do. Right. And uh, we're going to try and hopefully we'll succeed. We want to tell shows, we want, we, we want to do anything. Um, we want to tell stories, we want to make documentaries, we want to make long format shows, uh, content that's sure. interesting and films that come out of India that hopefully can be a wider audience that's commercial films right. out of India. Zoe Akhtar, many, many congratulations. Thank, Thank you. you for a wonderful film. Thank you for wonderful content coming Thank out of the you. company. Looking forward to lots more. Yay, Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you.